It's Larry Adineko welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adineko Center for Age Aspiration, the place. It's the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gem to upon the crown of our Lord Jesus. We are sharing truth this morning on why Abel's offering was accepted, coming from Hebrews chapter 11, 4 through 6. A little prayer and then we jump into it together. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks, O oh God, and we do so always. We had a fine night rest, a sweet, a sweet one, and we are, pray, we are grateful. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name as we minister this time around. Lord God, let there be utterance, let there be hearing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, then we said uh, Hebrews 11, 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift, and through it, being dead still speaks by faith enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because god had taken him for he was taken uh, for before he was taken he had this testimony that he pleased god for without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him okay then from four now abel offered to god a more excellent sacrifice than cain now this is one of those things that people ask questions about what was there about cain's offering that made that made god to prefer that of abel to that of cain after all uh cain was into crops and abel was into animal farming so what did you expect him to do he's going to have to bring things from his own uh, line of business to god uh, each person will bring from their own line of business to god so how do you blame him you know for that and all that so and there have been so many explanations um you could have converted it his own into animals as well or uh, maybe he didn't bring the fattest or the biggest of his offering to god or uh, you know so many things have, have been have been said but you see we find in this book of hebrews it says by faith <clears throat> abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than cain and through that he obtained the witness that he was righteous and all that so the answer to that question is found actually in the book of hebrews the book of hebrews says that it is because he offered his own sacrifice by faith that it was called an excellent sacrifice whereas cain did not offer his own by faith what do i mean by that most likely as abel brought the stuff that he brought to god he brought it with a heart that god you are god and i believe that you are love and i believe that you accept me the way i am i believe that um no matter what i've done my best my best may be small but knowing who you are i know that you will yet accept this my small best and you will rub your hand upon upon the hair of my head and you know and draw me close to you as you smell you know um um Yes, to smell my offering coming to you. I believe that. So he believed God. He um, um, he exercised faith in the nature of God, in the personality of God, and he brought his offering with that understanding before God. Whereas Cain most likely did something that is not quite the same as I described with, with Abel. Now, let me give an example of the kind of thing I expect that uh, Cain did. Let us uh, take an offering to God. We don't know whether it will be acceptable to him or not now, but let us just do our only two bit and let him not say we didn't bring anything. That is a big difference between the, what I described for Abel and what I described for Cain. Because the Bible says by faith, he obtained a more, you know, he, he is, uh, offered God a more excellent sacrifice. That was some faith he exercised in God, in the nature of God, in the personality of God, which Cain did not do. Okay, and that is the difference between the two, as we find in the book of Hebrews. He says it is by faith that he obtained a more excellent sacrifice, you know, or he offered a more excellent sacrifice than that of uh, Cain. Um, you will see this kind of a thing in the relationship between David and God and his family or his siblings and all the rest of israel and god he seemed to know god better he seems to have an understanding of god better he exercised he walked in faith with god and he made a difference in his life big difference in his life so abel that's why god you know says his, his sacrifice is a more excellent sacrifice than that of cain this going to god and bringing offering 
uh, with an attitude of, ah, please let us give him an offering. No, he's God. He has all the power. That is not faith. That's not faith. Faith is, Lord, I'm bringing this thing to you. I really wish I could do better. But this is my best. But knowing who you are, I know you will yet breathe upon me and say, breathe. Thank, thank you, son. I accept it like that. Very much like your little child <clears throat> busy taking his... Uh, uh, cereal, you know, you know, and then as you come to say hello, good morning, he offers you a little, you know, a, a scoop of, of his cereal. You really appreciate it, okay? Because he's doing it towards you in love. He's not doing it grudgingly. Amen. Let us just go on. That is enough now. And then he says he obtained a witness that he was righteous. Faith always brings a good report, always brings testimony. Because he of, we said that before, you know, and we are saying it again. Because he did that, he obtained a, a, a testimony. He obtained a witness that he was a righteous God testifying of his gifts, you know. So you see, faith, when you exercise faith, always brings about testimonies, always. Okay, and uh, this is another example. God testified, testified, testimony. We are saying the same thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then he says, through it, um, uh, though, though dead he's still speaking can you imagine that in other words he's still saying something to those of us of this generation telling us to get to know this God too many people the way they relate to God they relate to God truly like a sovereign yes like a king yes but you see you want to remember that this God is also your father it's amazing that people that go on saying daddy daddy when they pray and calling God daddy daddy the same ones are the ones who will expect that uh, the smallest mistakes you, you, mistake you make God will just fire you <laughs> you know so he will just strike you. It doesn't go with the daddy you say when you are praying. It doesn't, they don't, it doesn't go together. Okay? It's important for us to know this God, know his personality, and know when you see something, no, this cannot be God. You know? Okay, we can go on and on about that. He says, so he's still speaking to some of us today so that we can learn from the life of Abel the kind of person God is and the way he wants us to relate with him by faith, expecting that God is a good God. He lives up to his word. He's a faithful God. He watches over his word to perform it and all that and all that and all that. Then by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see that and was not found because God had taken him. Therefore, he had this testimony. Before he had this testimony that he pleased God. Faith always comes with testimonies. That's just it. Always comes with testimonies. Look at it again in Enoch. We have seen it first in Nebel. Now again in Enoch. It always comes with testimony. I had a testimony that he walked with God and he just disappeared. He just left. Most likely, um, in his heart, he said to himself, I love God so much. I like to walk with God. I like to be with God in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. I just want to be with God. I want to be with him every time. And that heart, that desire in the heart is what, what made God pull him up so that he can be with him permanently according to the faith of his heart. Praise the Lord. Okay, then verse 6 now is a big one. He says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and is the rewarder of those who diligently say, Without faith it is impossible to please God. Honestly, when you come to God, you must come by faith. You must understand that this is the way God loves things to be. Believe Him. When he says, I love you, believe him. When he says, I'm a God of love, believe him. When he says, my thoughts towards you are not of evil, but of good, to bring you to, to be, um, I hope, and an end. Believe him. When he says that, you who touches, touches the apple of my eye, believe him. You know, so many things that God has said, when he says, come, let us reason together, believe him. When he, you know, just believe that God is and live a life um that uh, means that implies that god is not only alive available but actually beside you with you in all your ways believe that because that's the kind of person god accepts he says for without faith it is impossible to please god you must exercise that faith to please god remember all the things we said about faith before can you remember what we spoke about the substance uh, about the foundation about the uh, holding pillars about the 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 um reckonable fabric can you remember all those things and then the things we said about about uh, about uh, a deed about a certified check and all those things all those things mix them together exercise them towards god so that even though you don't see him you know he is anyway even though you don't see him just like you hold a certified check and that certified check is money even though it's no money yet it's money <laughs> praise the lord so exercise all that towards god you know and then and then he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him 
I want to talk about seeking God and seeking God diligently. I like to define diligence as doing the right thing, the right way, the right time, the right number of times, uh, and then for long for the yeah for long enough a period of time. That's it. Seek God that way. Seek Him diligently. Seek Him with all your effort. Look for Him. Say, God, I want to know You more. I want to be closer to You. I want to understand You better. I want to be deeply into You, and I want You to be deeply into me. And do that with all diligence. God will reward it. That's what the Bible says. Nobody who thirsts after God and um, according to knowledge, according to the Word of God, because you are seeking after God outside the Word of God, you are looking for trouble. But when you seek after God inside the pages of his word and according to the word is inside his word he will reward you when you do it diligently when you don't do it diligently you're going to struggle a little bit but then um, as you apply diligence in what you do you get the reward of God I, I think we should just leave it this way we are taking quite a bit of time but you know Hebrews 11 is a very very big one to my mind if you call Hebrews 11 Hebrews is okay by me because it's loaded and so because you will notice that we are taking it just a little bit so that people can get a lot from there. Uh, the Lord bless you this morning. Thank you for sharing time with us. We really do appreciate you. Bless you.